Welcome back everybody. Another fun little video here on a console amplifier here at Blue Glow Electronics today. Um, this is an amplifier you may have remembered a video from a long time ago. It was one of my earlier videos and I probably used a uh, my hand as a mount so you may have gotten motion sickness at that point in time. So we have progressed a little bit. Anyway, this is an RCA RS177A console amplifier and this is one that uh, Actually, a friend of mine had owned, and I think he ended up painting the chassis and the transformers, and then he ended up uh, bringing it to me, and I did a restoration job on it. He sold it to another friend of ours who owns a little uh, kind of antique shop, and it sat in there and played music for a, a few years, and then a customer came along and bought it, and, um, and I've gotten to know that customer since then. Uh, and he, was, he and I were having breakfast not too long ago at one of our local audio meets and he got to asking me about this and was there anything that could be done to put more gain on the front end and that is the downside of this RS-177A. Um, this thing uses a 6CG7 in the very front end of it and if I can find one of them I'll show you here. It's a little bit bigger than what I've got in there now. But uh, it's a fairly weak tube from a gain standpoint. It has a uh, gain of 20 on this. One side of the tube gets used for the first stage of gain, and the second side of the tube here gets used as a phase splitter for the push-pull 6BQ5s. And so, um, you know, I thought without adding another tube on the front end, uh, is there anything I could do to just kind of increase the gain on this? So been doing a little bit of research, uh, see if anybody else had done any of these, and there are a couple comments out there I uh, used as a basis for starting, and then from that we just really got it on the bench and did a lot of testing. We played around with uh, uh, cathode resistors, plate resistors, um, feedback, um, some cathode bypass caps, played around with quite a few different things. So I actually have this thing where I think I want it at this point. Now I'm running a 12AX7 on the front end now, and which is a gain of 100 instead of a gain of 20. So it gives you a good bit more drive into these um, 6BQ5s at this point. But let me show you what all I've done to get it uh, what I will call souped up or, uh, or modded a little bit. Alright, you can see here the... Uh data sheet for the 6CG7. If you'll notice it's a 9 pin diagram here uh, but we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute and if you'll notice this tube operates off of um, 6.3 volts and one last thing I'll show you down here typical operation here if you'll notice class A amplifier which is how we would be running this um, you get an amplification factor of 20 here on this tube Okay, we've got the 12AX7 um, data sheet up here. If you'll notice, it's a 9-pin tube as well, but there's a slight difference, and we'll come back to that. But if, one thing you're going to notice is that you have two ways of operating uh, the filaments uh, or the heaters on this tube, and you can either run it at 12.6 volts or 6.3 volts, and we'll, we'll come back to that. But if you scroll down a little bit, oh, right here. Um, if you'll notice class A amplification, amplification factor of 100. So I think this would be a much better choice on the front end of this amplifier, um, especially if you're trying to drive it with something like an iPhone or just an uh, iPod or some kind of media player itself. Okay, if you go to my website, blueglow.net, and then click up here on sketches and info, I've now added the RS-177A uh, console amplifier front end hot rod mod um, and here's the schematic I've posted and I'm going to walk you through that a little bit okay so here's what all's involved in this upgrade and it's it's not a not a tough job uh, probably take you about an hour to do effectively um, you're going to swap the 6CG7 to a 12AX7 so you're kind of going here as I mentioned from a gain of 20 to a gain of 100 um, you're going to re rewire the heaters and let me show you why over here if you'll notice on this tube pin number four and pin number five are the heater wires here on the 6CG7 and um, across four and five is six volts well 12AX7 down here works a little bit differently 
um, from pin 4 all the way down through the heater over to pin 5, you would actually feed 12.6 volts instead of 6.3. Or on a 12AX7, pin 9 has a center tap here and you can parallel these. So what you can do is short 4 and 5 together and then feed off of 4 and 9 or 5 and 9, doesn't matter if you short them together. And then you can run 6.3 volts there. So that's what we end up having to do here. If you'll notice, we move pin 5, um, move pin 5 wire to pin 9. So what was feeding this side of the 6.3 volts, we're moving it down here now to wire 9, and we're jumpering 4 and 5 together, leaving the original connection to 4 in place. So basically, you're feeding it here to 4, coming out 9 with 6.3 volts, and you're tying 4 and 5 together. So you're paralleling the heaters here at 6.3 volts allows you to use the 12AX7. Next up, we're going to replace the input to plate resistors. Um, originally they were 82K, we're going to replace those with 100K ohm, um, and that would be here on the 12AX7, both uh, the connections that go to pin 1 and pin 6 here. And then we're going to replace the input tube cathode resistors, um, the 5.6K ohms, we are going to replace with 300 ohm resistors. So I will tell you the 300 ohm resistors right here, it's not what you typically see on a 12X7. We're running these things pretty darn hot. Um, if I went back to the data sheet, it'll tell you that uh, 12X7 usually runs at uh, 1.2 milliamps. I'm running at these things at about 1.5 to 1.6 milliamps with these 300 or uh, 300 ohm resistors in there. And, um, but 12x7s are pretty cheap and I'm getting a little more gain out of it this way. And, I, and honestly, I spent a couple hours on the bench playing around with this thing, uh, trying different resistor sizes, different uh, feedback resistors and whatnot. And I uh, got this thing playing really well with uh, very, very little distortion. Um, so I'm not worried about the, uh, the long tube life. I mean, these things are going to last a long time, just not, maybe not quite as long run on this hot. You're going to replace the feedback resistors feeding um, from the outputs all the way back to the 12AX7 cathodes here. You're going to replace the um, 8.2K resistors. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this nomenclature. Instead of 8.2K, um, 8K2, it's something you see used in Europe a lot. And I've actually grown to like it a whole lot more. Instead of 300 ohm, you see 300R. Um, 6K8 would be 6.8K. Um, I've actually grown to really like this nomenclature a lot more than the U.S. Because the, the, especially on schematics, when you put 6.8K, it's really easy for that period after you after a, a schematic's been copied a few times to disappear, and then all of a sudden you put a 68K resistor where there should have been a 6.8K. You can't make that same mistake when you use this type of nomenclature. And then last, and I only did this because the, I, this thing still has the original can caps in it. Um, and I was just trying to take in as much load off of those as I can. So I replaced the 20 microfarad segments uh, feeding off of the uh, cathodes of the EL84s with two 47 microfarads uh, just to get away from the can cap and give a little more oomph there on the uh, cathode bypass. But um, things playing really well. Let me show you the schematic. Just a quick little walk through. You feed the input here. Uh, kind of comes through this little uh, resistor divider with a grid leak resistor here into the cathode, of, I mean the grid of the 6CG7. Comes out of the 6CG7, goes through this 0.27 that I've replaced with 0.33 microfarads. Feeds into the second um, stage here of the 6CG7, which is actually then a phase um, inverter. And part of that feeds out the cathode here into um, one of the 6BQ5s, the other part feeds out the other plate into the 6BQ5, and this, this stage has unity gain or slightly less than. So really what we're trying to amplify is this right here to drive more into this, which will ultimately drive more out into this, and ultimately more to your speakers at the end of the day. So a couple things we've done along the way. First and foremost, um, as you come out of this, you'll notice both the plates here of uh, both these 6CG7s, this would be like left channel and right channel, 
They both feed down here to these 82K ohm resistors and I've replaced those with 100K ohm resistors. And likewise over here on the output, um, you can see here that the cathodes of this 6CG7 feeds over to this point and you've got the same thing kind of going on the cathode here feeding over to this point. And this becomes your uh, cathode resistor right here. So I've replaced this 5600 ohm with a 300 ohm. Same down here on the bottom, 5600 ohm with 300 ohm. And then the this here, if you'll notice a tap off of the output here, um, is feeding back. Uh, this is your feedback loop, negative feedback loop. So I replaced the 8200K ohm with 6.8K ohm. And what I did was I put a potentiometer, a 10K potentiometer in here. And I just played with it until I got the absolute best sound that I could get, as well as um, some really good distortion figures. And so I was happy with the 6.8K at this point. And then the only other thing I did here, and I didn't show it up here on the top part, but you can see where I replaced this, um, replaced this uh, 20 microfarad that was part of that can cap with a 47 microfarad right here. So. Pretty simple change, you should be able to handle it. And I also told you right here, you need to uh, rewire the heater, move pin five to pin nine and jumpers uh, four and five here. Okay, with the amp upside down here, so both of these, uh, this yellow wire here and this white wire here, feed back to the cathodes of the 212AX7s. And what you'll see here is the first resistor, it's a little hard to tell here, but it goes between this point here and actually this ground bus right here. And these are the 300 ohm resistors that I put in. So basically the cathode resistors for the 12AX7s there. And then if you flip it over here, you'll notice that from the same points here, you also have these that feed back coming out of the, uh, the transformers. These are the feedback loops, and that's where I've got the 6.8Ks um, with these little capacitors bypassing them here. Um, and let's see what else did we do. We disconnected, I think I told you about, we disconnected the two sections here of this capacitor which were 20 microfarad, both which fed over to common points like this yellow wire here between the two 6BQ5s and there's another yellow wire down in here that ties these two, the cathodes of these two 6BQ5s together. So we cut those loose and what we did instead was we came across this 130 ohm resistor here um, with the 47 microfarad capacitor there and you can see I came off of this resistor down in here and I came up with the 47 microfarad bypass cap there. You can see up here on the actual 12x7s here and over here where I actually have the uh, 100k plate load resistors and everything else here the 33.33 uh, UF Coupling caps all throughout this were um, were done in the first uh, modification, so it wasn't too bad of a job. Uh, two new tubes, uh, six resistors, and a little bit of cleanup on the uh, the wiring and whatnot. Okay, we got it all plugged up now, and um, with an iP just I'm just driving it with a standard on little um, iPod. It Drives Can't really well. count the bodies anymore. The blood and whiskey dance like lovers on the barroom floor. These eyes are sore. These boots are war. They cannot tell the story anymore. Yeah, I'm happy with how this thing's turned out. Anyway, let's see what the specs look like up on the uh, on the meter with this thing. All right, here we go. So we're driving this thing right now with uh, 0.4 volts in, which you know is uh, line level or a little more. Um, and we're at 0.69% uh, distortion on this amplifier, as you can see over here, basically 20 volts uh, peak to peak. And up here on the 80, 3582 spectrum analyzer, there is nothing going on there, homelinks-wise. So I'm pretty happy with how this thing 
has turned out at this point in time. Um, even on the you know the right channel, left channel, both uh, pretty darn synced up here. I am uh, really happy with how this thing's performing. Um, distortion numbers look really good because you really only have one stage up here driving this before. If I had built a multi-gain stage on the front end here, you'd probably get a little more out of this amplifier. Uh, but I think we've done about the most we can get with a single tube at this point. So, pretty happy with it. Hope you uh, learned something if you got one of these, at least without adding a completely second stage on the front end now. You can, uh, can hot rod the unit a little bit as is and get a lot more gain out of it. Thanks for watching everyone.